everybody. Good morning. This is Jean here. Jean True Love from True Love Quotes for You. I am working and finishing my Carpenter Star quilt. One of the last videos I put up, I was showing you how I'm going to be binding my quilt. And this is for people who have never watched me before, perhaps if you're new here, to see how I use a straight grain binding, two and a quarter inch, to go around my curved corners. I, I say in my video to follow that my followers who have watched me know how I do this. I do not use a bias binding. Now, there are two um, schools of thought about bias binding, that it's because of the way it's cut with the fabric on the bias, it is much stronger, a much stronger binding than a straight grain. I have only used the bias binding when I have a scalloped border and then it's curve after curve after curve after curve. Yes, but <clears throat> you must excuse me. <clears throat> I have a tickle on my throat. But for my, the majority of my quilts that I make, I, and I curve my corners, I don't do a square corner, as you know, I use a straight grain. And that's what this little tutorial to follow is all about for um, anybody new who's following me, because I have done it before. So I'm going to finish that up. I just wanted to address the fact that I had gotten so many nice comments. <clears throat> oh, you must excuse me. <clears throat> I, had a, I had a bad night. I had like this post-nasal drip. Oh. And it leaves a bit of a sore throat and a, a cough. But I'm fine. Um, a couple of nights ago, oh, uh, people have, a, have, have asked how the Pennsylvania area is doing with the flooding. <laughs> the floods here on the East Coast. Vermont, oh my goodness. And um, it was in Bucks County, Pennsylvania. I got several comments. Are we okay? Uh, we used to live in Bucks County. The area that was hit hardest, we know extremely well, um, up on River Road, um, near Washington's Crossing. Um, yes, it was terrible. Uh, four people, four to, or I think five people have been found dead, and four are still missing. It was not as if people were, I've said in my comments, it wasn't as if people were being foolish and, you know, rushing to... Uh, you know, out to go to the grocery store or something. <clears throat> they got caught out driving. All of a sudden, walls of water just came, tumbled the vehicles over, and um, they were lost to the this flash flooding. It is terrible here. I that night that that happened, um, I was up for many hours in the night just praying for calm. We're very safe here in our home. 112 um, years, this house here has never flooded. So um, I'm assured about that. And it's a nice, strong home. But I do get very, very nervous when it rains and these floods that are happening. Oh, my word. So my prayers go out to all of you. Um, I have wanted to finish my um, carpenter star, star quilt here. As, as you know, I've done a tutorial on this to get to this point. And I've, this little video to come is showing you how I chose the binding and how I'm putting my binding on. And as I said, my followers have seen me do this a million times. But if you're new here, you don't need bias binding to go around a curved corner. And I show you exactly how to do it. All right, folks, I will put up a video. I mean, I will put my video up now. And then afterwards, I'll, I'll show you some really lovely pictures of my finished Carpenter Star quilt. I did not quilt this. Um, I did not machine quilt it. I sent it out to my long arm quilter, quilting by David in Missouri. He did a beautiful job. I took advantage of his um, free batting offer, as you know. So, um, quilting by David. I think I've shown you some up close, but I'll show you the finished product when I'm, uh, when I'm done putting my binding on. I just have a little bit way to go, but I thought I'd just um, say hello to you. I hope you're all doing well. I hope you're keeping safe and dry. This weather is just terrible. It has broken the heat um, here in um, our part of Pennsylvania. But um, yeah, I just wanted to say hello, and I will be back with my uh, Rowing Along project to figure out what I'm going to do next on that. But I do hope you enjoy this tutorial. Thanks so much, everybody. Have a lovely day. Bye-bye. Love from the true loves. So the first thing I'm going to do when I'm going to be choosing my binding on my quilt is I'm going to audition different fabrics that I have pulled. Um, I had thought, yeah, the obvious one to go with would be the gray uh, that I have here. And I, I quite like this little um, print here, the directional arrow going up. So I would be cutting it like that. But 
um, when I have a print such as this, which is a bit of a larger scattered print, the binding, which will only be two and a quarter inches, will probably cut off some of these. So uh, it might look a little bit like staccato, <clears throat> if you can understand what I mean. Like there, there could be some white, there could be some gray. So I've, I've discounted that one. And then I thought, well, I quite like that one. That's an all over reeds dark gray, <clears throat> which is the background here. And I just think, eh, it's a little bit, it's a little bit boring, uh, fairly predictable. And then since I have the lighter gray, which, which is in the, my quote over here, I pulled the, this little dot. Now, as you know, I like stripes and dots, um, but I don't love that dot with that. For some reason and then here's a lighter here's a lighter gray which i thought oh i quite like that in the beginning and you see the big difference the difference that the um the grays make but then i thought oh, i'm going to go a whole different route i had pulled this this one this red <laughs> i had gotten this i had gotten i think about 12 yards of this fabric for a dollar a yard um when uh, joanne fabrics around here was going out of business and you had to buy like the whole bolt it was crazy so i bought a ton of that um nice quality cotton and i thought well maybe i'll pick up the burgundy of the the red and to make my binding pop <clears throat> but i'm looking at it and it's more this is more of a um like a like a, almost like a firecracker red as opposed to the the burgundy-ish here and the deep rose it's not really a, the red then I'm looking at the quilt and I'm thinking well it has it has this pink and white dot in it and I pulled the pink and white dot and I thought well let me just see a little bit more subdued and then I thought oh I quite like that this is just going on our guest bed I quite like that it pulls the it pulls the lighter rosy pink and the cream of the white dot it's a small enough print that you'll be able to see that it's a dot and then it also goes it also goes with the um dots here and i have dots also in the body of the quilt so i quite like that one i'm going to choose this pink um it's going to be a little bit more feminine and or a little bit more a little bit brighter to the end and of course the backing is the exact same as the binding so it will look nice on either side <clears throat> of my quilt so that's how i audition the print and as as i was saying before as you know i will cut this fabric on the straight grain now this is how it comes off of my uh my bolt here let me just see. I do. I, I just had to figure out. I had enough. Yes, I've. I'll just neaten up that corner. And what I'm going to do is, I won't bore you. I will take my uh, my fist cars ruler, as you know that I I love my fist cars ruler here, and I will take my two ruler method, which again you know how I do this. I'll neaten up this edge here. Um, like this let me move my camera over here <clears throat> I'll make sure this is all nice and square on my table here making sure my ruler is lovely and square I'm just going to cut this bit off obviously because I had used that make sure my fold is completely <clears throat> on the line there and then my fist cars ruler I just put my hand down and I just remove um, that bit now what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut I have my second ruler here and I'm going to find my two and a quarter inch um, line on my ruler right there I'm going to line it up some people like a two and a half inch binding I quite like a two and a quarter inch and I'm just going to continue making sure this is nice and straight just going to continue now my quilt <clears throat> i'm gonna I, I i start out i make about eight of these <laughs> because i think it's like two on each side two four six eight that's what i'm going to do 45 i think it's going to be a little bit too much but that's how i do it i know you can measure by the inch but i'm just going to continue making eight of these <clears throat> cutting eight of these and then i'll be sewing them together and the two and a quarter gives a nice uh, neat tidy binding it's not too big it's certainly not too small to work with. 
And um, yeah, I like my two and a quarter inch. So I'll just continue cutting eight of these. Seven, eight. Okay, now I'm just going to sew my binding together and iron it in half. So those of you who have been following me know that a lot of quilters prefer to have a square quilt. Obviously, you've made it square, your borders. I personally, if you followed along with me, know that I like to curve the corners of my quilts. Uh, maybe you can see right there. That's a curved corner of my little wall hanging there. <clears throat> I curve the corners of all my quilts. It's just a preference that I have. Um, when I was started to started to uh, quilt starting out, I really messed up a mitering the corner of my quilt. I didn't know how to do it. I was um, I have quite a few, maybe maybe a dozen or so square quilts. And then I just thought, why am I messing with this miter here and making it perfectly square when I can just round the corner and just be on, be get, you know, and be on with it. <laughs> so what I do is I take the two corners, doesn't matter which two corners, top or bottom of my quilt, and I know my quilt is pretty square, how I've made it, so there's my two corners put together, and then I've, I can do this by eye because I've done it so very many times but if you would like to have a, a plate or a saucer or um, a, some kind of curve by all means you could mark that but what I do is I, I know how wh where I want to start I start my quilt this is a larger quilt I'll start this about four or five four or five inches down and I will just make my I'm um, sort of imagining where my curve is here I'm coming up to that point there and then I'll just sort of mirror image, I'll sort of mirror image that, that um, curve, like so, up to that point, and then I'll just finish it off like that. And there, two sides of my, my quilt are already curved. And they're sort of like my template over there, you can see, for the, the, the bottom half. <clears throat> So I'll put these two edges together, it's not rocket science, just what I like to do to make a bit of a softer looking edge. Put those two together and then I'll use this sort of as my template right there so I get the profile the same, sort of hold them together. And there I go. Sort of soften that edge up, and there I go. I have four lovely curved corners. Now, back I'm over at my machine. <clears throat> the first thing I'm going to do before I start sewing my binding, again, my straight grain binding, is I'm going to make sure that I've cut off the selvage edges of my binding here. I just put my edges together as they come off, so you can see that because as we know these little selvage edges are woven much tighter <clears throat> you don't want those tight uh, edges in your seam because they will shrink a uh, bit differently than the the way this is woven the way your fabric is woven so I just cut off these selvages like that put them over there and what I do is I'm taking one piece like that, and I'm sure everybody who knows who's who's ever done this, I'm putting my other piece like so. Let me just pull this over here. I'm putting my other piece completely uh, going this way. I don't know what that angle is. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to sew <clears throat> from this corner. If you're new here, I'm going to sew from this corner here to that corner there. <clears throat> pinch and pull. That one got a little bit skewed. 
I'm doing this in the morning. I'm a little bit tired. <laughs> you must excuse me. I'm going to cut that to a quarter of an inch. I'm going to do my other ones much better. But as you can see, there's my seam right there. But when I go to press this open, like so, and then fold it in half, there won't be a big bulky seam here every 40 inches or so on my binding. It's, it's staggered as it were. There's a seam over there and then there's a seam over there. So I'm just going to continue. So there's all my binding. I think I have enough. I'm going to just go over to my little ironing board which is behind me. My little mini iron which I love. And um, I'm going to press this. Just going to fold that in half and press it like so. Now, as you know, or may not know, um, I had this quilt quilted by a long arm quilter, um, David and his wife Karen and their team out in Missouri. And when they, they, when they load my quilt or a quilt onto the machine, they do a basting stitch um, along the edge here. Now there is this, if you can see that, there are these long basting stitches here. What I, I'm not bothered about those basting stitches at the moment. Um, I will take them out after, if they show, I will take them out after I attach my binding. So now I have the back of my quilt here. Here's the corner. I have the back of my quilt. I'm going to, I'm going to come up about, maybe about 15 inches down from wh whatever, whatever edge. And I have my folded binding here. And I'm going to have the, obviously the raw edges together. And I'm going to leave a tail of about eight inches or so, like such. And I'm going to sew a quarter inch of my, in my binding. Hopefully this is, this is going to hit my tripod here. I'm just going to sew a quarter of an inch, of a fairly small stitch. I'm using about a two. So it's a nice, it's a nice sturdy stitch. I'm going to start just sewing my binding on. And again, I'm not worried about that basting stitch there. You see, there's a there's basting stitch. That will either be caught in the seam or I will pull it out at the end. I'm just going to be sewing my binding on the back of my quilt a quarter inch away from the edge. And I will show you what I do. <clears throat> I'm, not, I'm not pulling anything. I'm just laying my binding flat. And I'm not pulling, I'm not stretching, I'm keeping the needle straight in front of me, I'm keeping my fabric, I'm sitting right in front of the machine here, I'm keeping my everything nice and square to me, that way I can keep my quarter of an inch, and remember this is a straight grain binding, but we're going to be going around a curved corner, everybody asks, how do you do that without using a bias binding? Well, this is how I'm going to show you. <laughs> now, now, I am about five or six inches from the beginning of my curve. And this is where I really, 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 really relax my binding almost, not quite, but almost pushing it back, you know, you know, centimeter by centimeter, <clears throat> thread by thread, pushing it back, relaxing it under my presser foot there, making sure at all times I'm keeping that raw edge and my raw edge and my quarter of an inch. I'm not pulling this binding at all. The whole point of going around a curve <clears throat> is so your binding won't cup because if you pull this tightly you're going to have a quilt with a with um turned in corners your your quilt's never going to lay on the corners flat because your binding will have been stretched and pulled so uh, as you can see 
Let me just certify, see if I can hone in on this. Let me just see. Uh, where's the... Yeah, there we go. Okay. So, so as you can see, I've zoomed in on that. This binding here, straight grain, is just relaxed. Almost, you can see it almost, not puckering, but that relaxed bit will be what I can turn over <clears throat> and make my curve without any cupping. As you can see, I've, I've uh, demonstrated this tons before. Just take, you know, stitch by stitch, do not go fast, making sure you're keeping your quarter of an inch. Now, you might have the tendency to sort of come in a little bit, and, and you know, but it's very, very, very important that you keep this curve ever so relaxed and keeping your quarter of an inch and as I said almost almost to the point you're pushing it back under the presser foot so as not to stretch it at all it's just the four corners or these four curves that you have to be aware of then you can pretty much zip along the um, edges of your quilt the other four sides let me just pull this up <coughs> but I'm gonna finish this and I'm, I'm not gonna f I'm going to keep relaxing until I get about again about five inches up from the curve I'm just gonna keep relaxing that and as you can see I have maintained that important quarter of an inch I'm going to pull everything in front of me. And now I'm just going to lay that flat and I can continue. But I'm going to just show you, at this point, I have done one seam, or one curve. Let me just pull, push that out. So here's my curve, <clears throat> okay? And as you can see, it's a little bit, a little bit rucked up there. When I go to turn that over, you see how beautifully that turns over? There's no cupping, there's no uh, puffing up. I'm going to be sewing that on the right side of the fabric. And look how beautifully that turns over, just like that. There's no tucks, there's no cupping because I've relaxed it. But I will come to that point when I come to that point. I'm gonna finish sewing my binding on my quilt now. Yes, it is. Come down here to the next corner and I relax it about six inches above. I just start relaxing that back on that straightaway and pushing it under with my fingers as you can see. Keeping that quarter of an inch, just going bite by bite. Even if you get a little tuck, that's okay. Because, you know, a minuscule tuck, that's okay. Because then you know that you're, you're, going, you're not going to have a, um, <clears throat> uh, a um, tight corner there. Keep, oh, I'm, <laughs> I'm doing this and there's no bobbin thread. Oh, look at that. <laughs> okay, well, I'm going <laughs> to do my bobbin and then I'll, I'll be back. But you'll have seen it. Okay, fresh bobbin. <laughs> Let's start over again. Here we go. About six inches up from the top, start relaxing and relaxing. I can follow my, my whole stitch marks <laughs> where I stitched with no thread. <laughs> Again, just relaxing, relaxing. Important to keep your quarter of an inch. If there's anything difficult about doing this method, it's just being very, very careful to keep your quarter of an inch. But again, as I say all along, <clears throat> it's nice to have a, a method if you like the look of curved corners. By all means, um, <clears throat> if, you, if you love a mitered corner, and you can you love your squared off quilts by all means that's awesome 
I personally just like the look of my softer curved corners. And then again, here I am on the straightaway. Now I'm coming up to where I started. Here is my tail. And here is, I, I only have a little bit of um, binding left over. So I'm just going to cut this off so I know what I'm working with now. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to stop that right there. And again, I'm going to have a tail here of about 8 inches and a tail there of about 8 inches or so. Okay, so I do know I, I have enough of my binding. Okay, now how I'm going to, how I'm going to um, attach this is I'm going to take a piece of my binding that I've cut off. I'm going to just take a piece <clears throat> like so. That's exactly this, this width of my binding, okay? I'm going to take my top piece, which I have a lot of, a lot of um, play in. I'm just going to lay that over my bottom piece, which I have a lot of play in. I'm going to go right about in the middle, <clears throat> like so. I'm going to take my, my piece of binding here, my extra, and I'm going to put it right there where the middle there's 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 slack here and there's slack up there so i'm going to cut this is where you have to be brave i'm going to cut my top piece of my binding to that point there okay and i'm going to cut my bottom piece of my binding to that point there okay so now what i have when I go to sew this in, as we did in the beginning, I'm going to take my top piece of binding, like so, and then I'm going to do the exact same thing, how we constructed our binding. Remember, I do it like this, and I'm going to... I'm, excuse me, I'm going to sew from that corner. Whoops, let me get that underneath down just like I did the, the, the um, binding in the beginning. Now before I trim anything I want to make sure I did this right. <laughs> so there you go when it's off when it's all flattened if you can see I have my seam there and I can now trim that seam like so. So I hope you understood that. A tail, a tail, a piece to a piece that you're going to cut the top to this point and the bottom to that point. So you have now, you can go back, sort of finger press this seam open because you don't want a lump and it'll be a, a continuous binding. Go back to where you stopped. And then come back down to where you now began. It comes the time where I'm going to be stitching my binding. Now, a lot of people say, well, your machine's stitching it. I've said this a million times. Again, for my followers who have shown, seen me do this, yes, I'm machine stitching it. My machine stitch bindings last a heck of a lot longer than my sew hand sewing. I don't like to hand sew. I don't have the time. I don't have the energy to hand sew. So I don't. <laughs> now, again, as you can see, I'm going to start about, uh, about again, about maybe uh, 14 inches or so from the corner. Now, what I'm doing is I'm pulling this out. I'm pulling it out this way. I'm not pulling it towards me. I'm not pulling the binding towards me. I'm pulling it out, okay? And as you can see, my raw edges, and I have my this, this basting stitch. Again, I'm not worried about that basting stitch right now. I'm pulling that out, <clears throat> and I'm covering that area right there okay hopefully you can see that yes i'm just covering all of that uh batting the backing the top I'm pulling that out so yes you are going to see the stitching now a lot of people right at this point when they're doing machine stitch they may actually do a decorative machine stitch i just do a straight stitch i just start there i just do a straight and stitch now. And so I'm okay with my, like my top stitching as it were, stitching my binding down. I just push all that stuff in. 
keeping my binding exactly the same width. There's it over the seam. I'm pulling out. I'm not pulling towards me. And I'm just tucking all that stuff into that binding edge there. And again, yes, you can see my stitching here. And you can see my stitching on the back. But I'm okay with that. I always say it almost looks like it's a machine made. Well, it is obviously machine made, but like store bought because it's nice and sturdy. So I'm going to continue. And then when I get down to the bottom, uh, the curve, I'll show you what I do then. Coming to my corner, I'm doing the exact same thing. I'm pulling outwards. I'm not pulling towards me. I'm pulling out and I'm enclosing all this stuff here. And as you can see, this is just laying ever so flat and it just wants to be stitched down turned under or turned over I should say pulling it out tucking all that those threads in and stitching it stitching it down keeping it straight in front of me and and appreciating this curve as it is it bite 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 and as you can see, I'm keeping my quarter of an inch. I'm not, you know, make, I'm not doing that. I'm not coming back here. I'm keeping my quarter of an inch, checking all this stuff inside. Straight grain, no bias, nothing. And no, no stretching, no cupping. Just bite, bite, bite around that corner. Don't pull. Just bite, bite, bite. Hold it down with your fingers. If you get a tuck or two in the beginning, that's fine. Keep your needle down at all times, pulling it out, not towards you. Still not, I'm, I'm still not done quite the curve, so I'm just gonna keep turning it over the, the same size. Now, if you're doing two and a half inch binding, you'll have a little bit more play, but I like the the um, polished look of two and a quarter inch binding. It's a small binding, a sturdy binding. Coming back on my straightaway here. And I'll show you my curve. Needle down, and there's my curve. There's my curved corner right there, as you can see. And it's the same on the other side. No cupping, it's laying completely flat. I do go over and I will iron this. I always iron my quilts at the very end. You're thinking, well, why do you do that? The batting will puff up anyway. I just think you've messed about with the fabric a lot and it just makes a nice, um, a nice finished product. <laughs> <laughs>